A company hopes to address the environmental damage of plastic by becoming plastic neutral. The mission is to offset the company's animal plastic footprint and preventing plastic from winding up in the oceans. How do they plan to sustain this idea and how other companies can possibly follow this plastic neutral initiative? Let's go straight to the source of the story. We have Generation Hope Chairwoman and President Nanette Medved Boss, so good to see you again, thank Annette. Thank you, thank you. And again, so a lot of good news. So I want to start with this. For those who may not know, the good news is because of the company, your social enterprise, you continue to build classrooms well from the beginning from selling hope water that we find in various um, establishments. I want to ask you this first. How many classrooms have you built so far? Okay, I think... As I think as of our last count, we're always building. So, but I think of, as of the last count, we have 78, um, but we're really hoping to ramp that up in 2019. Lynette, it's, this is what we're seeing. That's um, the Hope Classrooms. Is yeah. that what you call them? Yes, yes. Hope Classrooms. Yes. Every time you see that, how does that make you feel? You know, um, it's always fulfilling to see something like that, but the truth is, is when I see a classroom, um, a hope classroom. I don't see so much um, a classroom. What I see is the effort of millions of people around the country who made a decision to build it. Because I didn't build it. Right. I just have an idea, and I have a company of great people who work every day to make sure that the decision of millions of people gets funneled into building classrooms. Right. So what I, when I look at that, that's two classrooms. That's a million people who made a decision to build that classroom. And Nameless, faceless yeah. people who really are doing great things. And now the good news is you're doing it, you're going a step further. Right. By announcing that Hope actually, Hope has been plastic neutral for the past, I would say, 13 months because it's been more than a year. Right. So first is, what is really is being plastic neutral? What does that mean? Okay, so what we decided to do is, when I started Hope in, 20, in 2012, the, the issue of plastic wasn't really there yet, or at least it wasn't, it, it's not as urgent as we see it today. And so I didn't think that there was necessarily an evil in selling <laughs> bottled water, yeah. right? So. But as time went by, we realized um, that plastic was a bigger and bigger problem. And so the team, um, in fairness to everybody at Hope, we all came together and said, well, we don't want to solve one social issue in education by creating another problem in plastic. So if we want, if we're willing to put money behind building classrooms, we should be willing to put money behind getting rid of our plastic footprint. So we spoke to all of our accounts to make sure that they were on board to you know, be good about plastic and so we say okay for every um, product we sell we weigh the plastic and say okay uh, just for round numbers so we don't confuse anyone let's just say there are 10 grams of plastic in a bottle we then assign a value to that 10 grams so let's just say it's 10 centavos for the sake of the you know the, the just discussion. comparison mm -hmm. right so every time we put if we're willing to put one peso to building classrooms, we tell our accounts, do you mind if we put 90 centavos to build classrooms and 10 centavos to make sure that that plastic doesn't wind up in the ocean or in our waterways or in our food chain? And of course, accounts, all of them are like, absolutely. But they've just never had a mechanism to do it before. So what we do is... What do you do? How yeah, does that so we happen? take that money, that. 10 Let's cents, 10 cents. Was, yeah, per bottle. Just like we have a fund for classrooms, yes. we have a fund for plastic, and it's called a non-specific plastic surcharge, recovery surcharge. It's very complicated. And the reason why we call it non-specific is we say, okay, for 2018, if we put out 100 tons of plastic into the market, we then work with our partners to make sure that we remove 100 tons of plastic post-consumer. Okay. So usually that's in the LGUs. Right. Now, it doesn't need to be, if I'm going to recover hope bottles, forget it. We'll never be able to do it. But if a company says, I'm going to get non-specific plastic, meaning I can get Coke bottles, I can get cooking oil bottles, shampoo bottles, as long as it's plastic and I'm removing it from the environment, 100 tons equal to my footprint, 
then I should be plastic neutral. So in other words, my footprint is zero. Right. Right. So that's what we're aspiring for. So for 2018, we were able to do it with the help of amazing partners as our pilot. We're going to continue to do it, and hopefully um, other people will want to do it as well, because the truth is, is hope is not as big as our you know, 800 pound gorillas in the market. Um, so even if we do it, it's not enough to feel an impact, but if the large companies decide to do it, then you've got scale and you can really make a difference. Isn't it the best that a smaller company can actually think of something like this and say that we hope that the bigger companies can possibly follow suit? Yeah, but I just want to be fair, okay? I I think that we can do it because we're small and very right. agile. I don't think there is a lack of desire of the large companies to do it because the truth is, is um, and Alexi is here today, we've spoken to the large partners. They all want to do it, but they kind of lack a mechanism. Right. So I think, you know, whether it's your Procter & Gamble, your Unilever, your Nestle, they all want to do this. Um, and what we're doing is we're a little bit of a guinea pig. Right, and so our operation is quite simple. Uh -huh. Theirs will be much more complicated, so they'll come up with another iteration maybe right. of what we're doing. But what we're demonstrating is that the market tolerance for being able to build in a recovery surcharge in a product is acceptable to the consumer because the consumers care. Yeah. Um, the truth is, is these big consumer companies, they all want to do something. So I think the last bit is that you really just need to be able to convince the LGUs to, and there are partners like our partners who co-process, they're willing to take the capacity, um, but you really need the LGUs to cooperate because that's where the garbage is collected. They and collect I noticed, the garbage. <laughs> I noticed just before our segment, right, earlier on in, in the, the show, the Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if the LGUs cooperate, since they collect the garbage and work together with processors, that doesn't need to wind up in the ocean. Right. right? And you know, I was thinking about that. Actually, Nanette and I were talking about it during the break. Problem possibly also is technology. Yes. Because I don't know, do we really, does the Philippines have the technology to deal with this? Okay, so we had to shop around a lot at Hope to find the best partners so that we were making sure that it was processed environmentally, right. you know, compliant. The truth is, is we don't have all that wonderful technology that the first world companies have, but we don't lack in options. So our partners at Republic Cement, and then you've got Wholesome, just to be fair, because I don't want to make it look like I'm promoting <laughs> just one company. Yeah. Wholesome does it as well. Um, you've got Green Ants, our partners for building. It may not be a perfect solution, but good shouldn't be the enemy of great, yeah. right? So while we're waiting for better solutions, we should still try and do something. And these are very good solutions that people can take advantage of, and they are absolutely willing, but what they lack is the cooperation of the LGUs yeah. to make yeah. sure that they are getting the kind of feedstock they need to process the plastic. Then isn't there a law that actually covers this? Yeah. Well, we all know that. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> so we're not, lacking in, we're not lacking in laws and regulation. No, it's and there. I, no, I think that I don't think that it's necessary. It helps to have better laws. I hear there's a bill in, in the House now that will take this a step further. But I don't think there's necessarily a lack in legislative kind. And I don't think there's a lack in desire on the part of consumers mm -hmm. or on the part of consumer good companies. I think the missing link is kind of at the point of collection, because right now, um, the garbage is being collected and presumably um, being put in landfills. It's not always being put in landfills. Mm -hmm. um, but the landfills, there's a capacity to that. And if you hear about Metro Manila having anywhere between 3,500 to 8,000 tons of garbage a day, okay. right? At some point, you exhaust that. And the truth is, is if you can convert that to a productive resource in waste to energy or True. in upcycling, right, to upcycling to more value add products, mm -hmm. then we should do it. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason we shouldn't. I think the, the, the key really is to start looking forward, being more proactive. Right. It, 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 it was key when you said that in 2012, when you started Hope, that you wanted to help. 
right. build classrooms right. through your bottled waters. But you didn't think about how that could possibly affect the environment. And here you are now, right. um, looking forward. And one of the biggest, uh, you know, stories we I always remember is that the the Philippines is the third largest contributor to ocean yes. plastic. Yes, we are. And it, that, that's an embarrassment, right? I mean, I think partially that's due to the fact that one, we don't have great collection systems in place. Um, and two, as you said, we lack the technology. But the truth is, is and there's actually a, a, um, there's a meeting or a symposium that's coming up being put up by the emb Embassy of Canada. And they're going to be talking about the new technology mm -hmm. and inviting the LGUs. And I think if you can, um, if they can realize in the same way that we realize that this yeah. is really such a big problem. Needs to be addressed. Yeah. Needs to be addressed. And I don't doubt the political will of the Filipino to make it happen. I think if we can just get some LGUs on, LGUs on board and show success stories, yeah. that there is no doubt. Sometimes it's really a model that they need to right. follow. So right. So in the case of hope, that's what we're hoping. We're, we're saying if we can present a... Uh, proof of concept, even if it's small, <laughs> yeah. that maybe others will be inspired right. to do the same thing. Um, I, I want to say thank you for that too, because more and more individuals right now are, you know, even in Boracay, when they reopened yes. Boracay, they banned the use of uh, the single use plastic right. um, in the island. There are more people who are conscious about it yes. now. And if you have personalities such as yourself and even other personalities, uh, taking the lead here, right. helping in their own way. Right. That means a lot. Right. And I think that, and as much as the Boracay story is very, very impressive, I must say, um, I think we should also, that's a, that's a bit of an extreme swing of the pendulum. I think that banning the single use plastic altogether is not realistic. Um, on a large scale, <laughs> only because there's so many products. I mean, forget water, because I don't want to look like this is self-serving. But there are so many products that rely heavily on, on single-use yeah. plastic for safety, um, for cost, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's in medicines mm -hmm. or just delivering food safely to the majority of the population. Yeah. It's just currently there isn't an alternative. Right. So I think. Um, to just say plastic is evil is probably not the right yeah. answer. Yeah, it's not also right yeah. to think that, but I guess it's also minimizing the use. Yes, so where you can, where just can, like exactly. in the case of Hope, we, we for customers who can afford to not use plastic, we give them the option of using Tetra Pak or reusable bottles so mm -hmm. that you can just refill. Right. But for those who cannot, we say, if you if you can't get rid of it, you must be responsible for recovering that plastic, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's what we're trying to introduce is the idea that the manufacturers have to, if they cannot come out of the plastic packaging, they must make some sort of commitment to make sure that that is processed safely after use. So just very quickly, as individuals, what can we do? I think um, just the little things that we can possibly yeah do. so I'm almost tempted to say the <laughs> cheesy thing and say you know uh, segregate your trash and all of that but the truth is is I think that the big big opportunity is not so much in one person segregating their trash I think that's helpful I think what's more helpful is if you lobby your LGU and ask them what is your solid waste plan because that is important to me um, as a voter, right? Because if you get enough people who indicate that they are, if they that they care, then the LGU has an incentive to pay attention, mm -hmm. and that then addresses a much larger issue. Now that the elections are coming up, that should be part of their um, campaign agenda and their promise. Right. Thank you so much, thank Nanette you. Medvedpo. Good to see you. Thank Good luck. You. And thank you for joining us here on the Source. I'm Pinky Webb. You're watching CNN Philippines.